Yeah, brother. All right, do the intro, babe. Hey. Hey, who this is Kermit the Frog. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Mo and O Show. I'm, I'm sorry. It's called the Mo and o Photo Show. Yeah. <laughs> You're so dumb. Yeah, I'm stupid. <laughs> I have rediscovered freaking 90s rap, brother. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I heard because I puns. played it for you. I got puns for you. <laughs> Man, um, I don't know, not to go off topic here. Oh, guys, welcome to the Mo and O Photo Show. We are a podcast that talks mostly photography, but also gangster rap. Gangster rap, son, every day, all day. <laughs> what if we were a gangster rap podcast? We wouldn't make it. No, no, we'd be such We don't get enough social credit dorks, it is. Yeah, you gotta be cool to be the, uh, gangster rap. Um, anyway, I love Snoop Dogg. <laughs> not awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway... Uh, so I, Omar watched the Netflix... Yes, Netflix, history of you rap. need to watch the history I, 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 of rap, of hip hop. Because after Omar has watched this, like all of a sudden, you know, I don't know if any of you remember on this show about two years ago or a year ago, actually, I got all my social media stolen and wiped away by some Russian bots. <laughs> and it was horrible. <laughs> and so I really am not a link clicker. You're afraid. You're so phobic. Of- yeah. So Omar, so I get a text from Omar and it's a link. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> you have to write to me. Is like, this you? Did you send this? What is this? Oh my gosh. Then he tells me, like, dude, it's the best rap stuff ever. It's not the best, but it's a sample of... Well, he decided to put a, 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 a list together of music that has sampled other uh, aspects of another song to make what hip-hop became. Yeah, hip-hop and, was into sampling old albums. So I never got a chance to listen to it, but when I got here this morning, he was putting it on his amazing speakers, and I was like, mm, yeah, it's very you, good. You know, right, mm. it was good. So uh, it started from watching the Netflix special Hip-Hop uh, Evolution, and it goes through the history of hip-hop, and then I got to the era which I remember being my favorite, which was that 90s, late 80s, 90s, uh, and I sent you the uh, Three Feet and Rising, where those the uh, the the De La Soul. Ooh. Like one of my favorite albums was the De La Soul, and they got so in trouble from sampling. They didn't give credit. It was like the, Zero the peak. I made it. Yeah, <laughs> the peak of sampling. And so I've been on a complete hip hop '90s, uh, you know, rabbit hole, which has been really fun. Which you should try, folks. If you're not into uh, '90s rap, get into it. Yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's do the news. You want to read it? All right. All right. <clears throat> this story comes from F Stoppers, Alex Cook. A Utah photographer is facing felony arson and criminal trespass charges after police say he was set fire to a house on Valentine's Day for a shoot resulting in damage to the home and burning his eyebrows and facial hair off. Oh my God. The photographer, Thomas Shea, was involved in the incident on Valentine's Day. A fire in Woodland was reported in Summit County authorities. And when they arrived on the scene, they discovered that Shea was with a partially melted coat. His eyebrow and facial hair was singed. Shea was taken to treatment in the hospital. Idiot. He initially (laughs) initially told the officers he had approached the house as a photographer after seeing the smoke emanating from it. After he was released from the hospital and authorities discovered evidence of arson, Shea admitted that he had come to the house with camera equipment and a five-gallon jug of gasoline. Oh, boy. You didn't think they would find out about that? And intentionally set the house on fire to shoot it. In fact, Shea lit it three times, extinguishing the first to himself. However, the third grew beyond his control, leading to his burns And he tried to, when he tried to extinguish it himself. The fire caused $5,000 in damage to the house, and in addition to Shay's injuries. His eyebrows are gone. No eyebrows and a melted coat. What an idiot. All like, right. So, the, so first of all, it doesn't really say what he was trying to capture. But right. It doesn't say like it was his house. Was it a friend's house? Does he know about Photoshop? I mean, <laughs> yes. <laughs> add fire. You know, they have stock fire that you could Pixel add. Pixel Imperfect would help him with that. Like, <laughs> you could add the fire here. <laughs> If you want the fire, you add it here. Yeah. But uh, I, I think what the reason we brought up this story was to talk about risk management, and risk risk assessment in photography. Right. Between knowing the lines of how far to push your photography for your client's safety and how to control your client's safety because sometimes they don't know any better. No, totally. So let's go back to this moron. So he was trying to capture maybe something epic with fire in a house. We're assuming it's his house or someone he knows because why would you break into a house and well, try to burn I don't it down? Th- I don't think it was his house because he came with, he showed up there with five gallons of gasoline. <laughs> well, maybe, well, he did put out the fire a couple of times, so maybe it was his kitchen or something. Maybe it was like a, a, a generic house in the woods that no one was living at currently. Yeah, we need to find out more. We'll get back to you. 
you on you know, that. That's what it is. It could be like, you know how, how they have summer houses and winter houses? Oh, yeah. And yeah. there's no one probably there during a time period. And, you know, he but decides. what like, photograph? For Valentine's Day, would you try to make. My love burns yeah, for you? Yeah, li- literally. <laughs> look at my face. Look at my eyebrows burn for you. Oh, now, now, first of all, as a man with a beard. Oh, man, you would have been. <laughs> I just like that's first of all you lack respect to your own facial hair. I mean, yeah, get it would out of melt. Here. Oh, my Forget God. your jacket, your beard mm. would melt. But uh, it it brings up a point where you know we're all built differently. So I'm sure some people are more risk takers. Mm. I've never thought about breaking into places. I have like abandoned. You know, I love those mm. abandoned place kind of photographs. But I I'm too nervous to. Right. No, I'm in the same place. We're, we're we're older people also. We are older, but we even are. when I was younger, I don't think no, I was so I was reckless. Younger, I was reckless. I, I was where? reckless. Oh, yeah, man, no. actually, that's true. We used to, you know, the Erie Lackawanna and Hoboken. Right. We used to we walk break in there. We used to break in there. Yeah, yeah you're right. Climb oh, up. Sorry. Climb up. <laughs> <laughs> I just what's the Sagittarius? Wait, I mean? Yeah. The, oh, we're good. <laughs> Twenty years plus. Um, so uh yeah you are reckless when you're younger so it doesn't say how old is this so, idiot uh it didn't say it didn't idiot. say okay but my, the, the point here is like first of all how far are you going too far for a shot uh setting a place on fire that that's line number one yeah that, that's gone too far yeah whether or not he, he put out the second the first two obviously he couldn't put out the third one so obviously he don't learn from his mistakes yeah well they weren't mistakes baby they were take one take two <laughs> <laughs> he was going for chicka chicka take three. Yeah, man, that's crazy. So, a risk assessment. Let's talk about you first. So, the first thing is you should keep you and property safe. Right. So, another example of that we've talked about in the past is is know your surroundings. Right. Like like if you're in a busy street area and you're shooting a a bride or a couple or your model by herself, you need to have a backup person with you to spot you. Spot. Because you know what. No matter how aware you are about your surroundings, you're not 100% while you're taking those pictures. Damn, I'll give you a perfect example. So I like to use prime lenses. um, And sometimes there isn't enough room to go. You're actually in the street Mm -hmm. when you use your prime lens. Like if you're using an 85 and you're shooting towards the businesses, not down the street, um, then you need to go into the street. And so I usually have dad or someone that's in the shoot spot me. Mm -hmm. So they... You know, because everyone wants to stare at what's happening, the photo shoot, but I make dad look down the street because someone on their phone, they'll they'll take me out. Right. They won't pay attention. they <laughs> like, there's another smear on my road. Yeah, totally. Uh, same thing is like, like, where are you? Where are you as far as your surroundings? Are you in the woods? Are you on train tracks? Yeah. Train tracks is the infamous for killing people. You know, you know why it is. It's because our brain can kind of only do one thing at a time. People, you, what do you hear? We didn't hear the train. Mm-hmm. You know why you didn't hear the train? Because your brain is focused on... Well, there's also the, the actual sound traveling. So my personal near-death experience on a train track was um, I was just shooting the tracks. I wasn't shooting a model. I had just gone there and I had been to that track many, many times and never seen a train. So I thought... This must be a dead track. So I got my camera stuff, and I'm, I'm, I'm just laying down, taking shots. And for some weird reason, I happen to look up, and there's a train about 20, 30 yards away, enough where I then heard the horn, Whoa. then jumped off the track, and it barreled past me. And I just sat there for like... 20, 30 minutes, just, I think, crying, pooping crawled. my pants. Yeah, thinking, you should. Thinking like, wow, even when you think you've researched unless you call the town and ask about the tracks you don't know anything about those tracks you're right because we have tracks here in nutley Mm -hmm. and they are abandoned they have weeds growing out of there but you never know never know yeah Mm. and so that's a good point is don't shoot on train tracks uh if you're shooting in the middle of the street you got to plan ahead you got to think ahead uh you know when's the least amount of traffic coming through here totally and also have someone spotting you make sure your clients are safe so I'll give you one quick example. I had a kid, since I shoot mostly teens and stuff, she was super hyperactive and like really athletic. And she wanted to keep upping the ante. Mm-hmm. Like, I will stand up there. I'll jump off this. And we were doing great shots. And then it got to a certain point where it was like to go up to a catwalk, you know? Mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about the catwalk. I knew that it was high up there. And, and, that, and that building you shot in was a really beautifully designed building, but it was a very was old, old building. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I need is uh, to be in the news. Like 13-year-old kid, uh, the catwalk collapses well, and hurts my gear. You're right. <laughs> yeah, you know, photographer's gear damaged. Story at 11. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> We're so mean. But oh. that's a certain point where think about your clients first instead of the shot. Don't go uh, just risk assessment. And I think we were talking also about how, you know, it's great to get an epic shot, but you, you should also have a workaround. Like, for example, Photoshop. And right. I've, I've been asked to do shots where things are on fire. Like Beautiful we did. Beautiful shots. I remember that. Remember yeah. the basketball mm-hmm. kid where Was his. It a soccer kid or a basketball kid? He had all the sports, okay. but his tennis racket needed to be on fire. It was like a whole fire theme mm-hmm. because of it was kind of like a barbecue hot spicy mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> mitzvah. It was such a fun mitzvah. But immediately I thought we have to Photoshop this. Right. I mean, I'm not like... Not setting, we're not setting uh, Tommy's gloves on fire. I, I got my five gallons of gasoline. <laughs> uh, and then the other one was uh, someone wanted to do the smoke, you know, the dramatic uh, colored smoke mm. photos. Mm. And I'm watching videos with my jaw open on these photographers that are doing beautiful smoke photographs. And I'm like... I can't do this. I would choke. I would die. So again, oh, we had a workaround for that too. I I came up with a different theme for what I. I you, you like, changed their. Whole I changed mind. their whole mind. You suck. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I don't no, want. No, you don't... actually, you did the right thing. You made you made a, a conscious decision as an outsider, rele, you know, relegating their self, their safety. Well, their expectations were that they were going to get epic smoke shots, and I knew that if we were going to do it, it just, the, everything has to be perfect. Wind conditions. It has to be done outdoors. It was the winter. Mm. You know, it was something where it wasn't going to work. Thank God. And so we did something different that worked really well so so it's not like my, my maternity shoot that i did with the little <laughs> <laughs> lighters but no a little, a little smoke uh like blue or red or, or blue or pink was it like little yeah colored smoke so basically there's like little oh yeah flares yeah, yeah, yeah little shoot, flares that yeah. shoot out blue smoke or red yeah smoke it was those or, or pink so it was it the smoke bomb that you pull something yeah, and it so starts like, billowing yeah, smoke exactly. yeah yeah it's so, those so i did one of those and um nothing says maternity like so basically <laughs> the girl was having twins oh so the it was reveal. a reveal it was a uh, reveal makes sense. <laughs> it was a reveal so, so i bought the wrong ones green and purple <laughs> <laughs> These aren't going to work. <laughs> yeah. uh, so basically, so she was holding them, and I'm like sitting here thinking, like, I've never seen these go off. Is she going to get in trouble? Oh, see, that's are, risk assessment. Know, so, so, yeah. I saying, so I was asking. And they were like, let's go for it. <laughs> and then the, the husband was like, no, I've, I've done these all the time with different colors for work. Okay. So this, Every, this yeah. is what this is what to expect from it. It'll sputter out at first as long as she points them away from him. So him, him being in construction actually – saved her life because had she pointed it any direction where the sparks oh could have come back to her dress great it would have been like baby you're on fire <laughs> the baby's in danger so, so what you... actually was pretty cool about the shoot was that i didn't they were the same thing right so i they were the same color on the on the exterior and then when they pulled them and there was actually a pink one and a blue one i'm like they're having mixy twinsies oh uh, so that cool. was one of my favorite shots anyway. that is cool awesome but the, here's the problem though because y- it's it's a one or two take shot, right? Yeah. Because you only have so much thick smoke. That's what I'm saying. You'd have to buy and, a bunch of wind bomb. and this and that. So what ended up happening was that she sneezed after she pulled the things, <laughs> and by the time she was able to recompose herself, there was no smoke almost left oh, whatsoever. Oh, that sucks. So I ended up having to Photoshop yeah, more bring that, smoke. Yeah, in. it was just it, ridiculous. I'm like, we should have just done that to begin with. That would have been great if she sneezed with like the smoke <laughs> coming out of her nose. That would have been great. Flaring. But just to jump off this whole like danger risk assessment, it doesn't have to be something dangerous. You know, it could be something where you assess, um, for example, if you're working with a young child and you're going to do a portrait or something. Well, you can assess, your risk assessment can be, you know what? I only have 15 minutes of good time with this kid laughing. So don't start investing time in, in like going somewhere like, hey, we need to climb up this. We need to take this kid here. We need to change his clothes now, you know, before we start right. working. But that might be a good one. Maybe the kid's dressed good enough. Don't friggin' start a tantrum by changing his clothes. Try exactly. to assess, assess, exactly. assess. Get something, and then maybe you could start. Exactly. With kids, kids, kids of a certain age, you definitely are. Uh, are you're on time, but on schedule. 
it's only a matter of time before they either tantrum or just complete nap out yeah. one or the other. So, well, I'm sure you've had a model where maybe you could have done one more look or gone to a different location and you're like, you know what, let's just rock out this bench a mm-hmm. little bit more. No, or- I, I've, <clears throat> talked, I've talked plenty of models out of a different outfit or a different location knowing where the sun is, yeah, knowing how much time, yeah, knowing where the weather was coming through. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I like, I, I know that women in general love to take multiple shots. Oh, multiple they could go forever. And, yeah. And multiple outfits, but you have, you as you're in charge there, yeah. you have to be smart enough to realize, yeah, if I, if we move just one block over, you're going to lose the light. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. light is light at light that time is... of day is just a beautiful, generous <laughs> thing. Can but... I give you an example of risk assessment? So I was doing, did you see my, um, shooting the, le- the, the cityscape? Mm-hmm. Remember I texted you if yes, you were going to yeah, go to Liberty yeah. state park. So I'm at Liberty State Park, and the sun is going down, and um, it's starting to get like pink and nice. Like, yeah, baby. Yeah, and I'm doing shots, and I'm I'm a. There's a guy who comes over. You could see him when I'm filming in that video. You could see him back there. It's this guy, and he spoke to me, and I didn't really understand what he said until I watched my video later, mm-hmm. and what he wanted me to do. Because when I was there, he spoke, and I was like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, and kept going. And then later when I'm editing, he wanted me, he wanted to do a jumping shot. He wanted me to photograph him with his phone. Mm. And um, I knew risk assessment. <laughs> yes, he wanted me. <laughs> risk assessment. I was like, I am not leaving this camera. The light is changing so fast mm. that anyone who bugs me, I was ready for that. Right. Um, and, and he came up and, and I could tell I disappointed him. He wanted to do some kind of photo you shoot. Just gave them, <laughs> So in the, in the video, he's staring at me. He's like, <laughs> he's staring because he knows I didn't understand. Mm-hmm. And then maybe he thought I spoke a different language or something because I just went, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You're such a jerk. <laughs> I'm such a jerk. I hid well, behind my camera. Shot, though, son. Yeah, yo, I'll put it over right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. Light is a delicate thing. Don't let anybody walk you away from it. Mm. Screw that guy. <laughs> See you guys next time. Bye. Be good. <laughs>